to our last presentation, and we have a special guest from Ukraine. Maxim Holovko is an architect and co-founder of Urbania Urban Office. For eight years, he has been working on the creation of various urban projects in Ukraine. Urban research, reconstruction projects of urban spaces, urban design and wayfinding systems. He makes cities more understandable and comfortable for users, and in order to restore Ukrainian cities as soon as possible, together with a dozen different experts, he created a Cities Rebuild Guide. So, designing for the future of Ukrainian cities. Uh, that's welcome, Maxim. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Maxim Holovko. Uh, as I was told yesterday, my presentation is not the last, it's a final. Uh, so I will tell you like a little bit about projects and also about our last project, the City Rebuild Guide. Like Urbanina is the, my company, it's my, like the biggest part of my life uh, because I am like the co-founder of this company and also because this company makes a lot what I like. Uh, First of all, we are designing the future of Ukrainian cities, but also uh, we make parties. Like Urbanina uh, was party at first, and then we develop our urban office. Uh, also, we make festivals. Uh, this was our the biggest one uh, before the COVID era, uh, where we try to explain uh, and talk to Ukrainians about the urban projects, how we can change our cities and make them better. Uh, also, we make a school. Uh, and we uh, like make the presentation of our school in the first day of the COVID lockdown in Kyiv, and the only one place where people still was allowed were allowed to be together was the uh, transportation uh, system. So we make presentation in the tram. Uh, but of course, like our main job is uh, urban projects, and I have like. Uh, nice uh, companions uh, in our firm like uh, we are only nine of us uh, right now but uh, two of them Denise and Maxim are already fighting in the Ukrainian army against Russians uh, two girls Zhenya and Anna is not in Ukraine right now so we have, like one of our main goal is just to get our uh, colleagues together to make uh, new projects because it's so hard right now uh, to make these projects in Ukraine. But it was easier uh, eight years later, uh, eight years before. So eight years of urban projects, uh, we start to make this from the, our projects from the revolution 2014. So, uh, but everything changed in the 24th of February because it changed even our projects uh, that we have made uh, before. Our first project that we made in with NGO uh, Agents of Change, uh, was key rapid transit map uh, and like you need to understand that uh, city design is like not the common uh, projects for ukrainian municipalities uh, and eight years ago it was like a miracle that we could make the design for transit map uh, and we make it like the initiative and 10 20 designers come together to make this uh, it was like just our idea but in the after the communication with the city administration, we make it real and the official transit map uh, that was in the Ukrainian trains, in trains, metro trains in Kyiv, like for seven years. But now uh, our map looks like this uh, because like metro stations in uh, Ukraine and Kyiv are not only for the passengers, now it's also the shelters for people who try to uh, escape from missiles uh, right there. Also, we made the Kyiv pedestrian wayfinding system. It also was our initiative design after the communication with city administration. It also became the real project and it stay in different uh, parts in the center of Kyiv, where we make it like the, all the navigation to people who come to Kyiv could find it, uh, everything that they want to find. But now uh, this pylon and navigation look like this. Because on 24th of February, we should uh, paint all the navigation system and all the signage uh, because we don't want now uh, that uh, the enemy could find something on our streets. Also, we have this school where we like come together a lot uh, of students, like architects, designers, uh, researchers, or just uh, IT 
uh, specialists and make together the projects, urban projects of the places in Kyiv, for example, streets or squares. Uh, also, we take a lot of uh, different experts from Ukraine who have real um, projects and they know how to make them. Uh, so we made like some vision uh, how can look uh, our squares. This, for example, uh, Lukanyevska Square, uh, where we believe there could be a good transport hub uh, with rainwater garden, also with the plaza for people uh, and like the square near the metro station Lukyanivka. Uh, but now this place looks like this uh, because there are a lot of missiles uh, attack uh, on this place nearby the factory. So even these ideas that was so common for us that we could make it better our city, now it looks not so easy to make. Uh, also, we have made the Voxalna Square. It is the main uh, square near the main train station in Kyiv. Uh, so it looks like this uh, before, where there was a lot of uh, different transportation, cars, uh, buses, and we believe that we could make it much more uh, delightful for people. We can have the square, we can make a park, uh, and easy connection between buses and the main train station. But now this uh, train station look not like this, but like this, where we have this banner uh, that says that you need to be brave to be Ukrainian, uh, just brave to live in Kyiv, uh, because the main train station is often like a shelter for people when we have alarm. So everything changed uh, on the 24th of February. Uh, and this is, was just the few examples of destroyed Kyiv, but there are a lot of Ukrainian cities uh, that are really heavily destroyed. It's, for example, Kharkiv, Mariupol, uh, Chernihiv. Uh, this the names of cities that you may have heard, but also there are a lot of villages and little cities uh, that are not everyone knew that they are, but they are also heavily destroyed. So we have this big uh, task and uh, new agenda: how to rebuild, like the all these cities, uh, and not only the big one, but also the villages where could live just one thousand people. Uh, and this is a hard dilemma because, like, we could make it quick, uh, like quick rebuild process, but then we understand that it will not be uh, like good good cities in future and we can make it like for 10 years uh, projects and some strategy but we understand that people are without homes right now so it's hard to understand what you should do right now like to go and repair houses or to make strategies uh, so we have like few much more uh, special challenges uh, when we try to rebuild ukrainian cities uh, first of all there are a lot of Foreign experts like architects, designers uh, that are already said that they are want they are willing to help Ukrainians to restore buildings, uh, repair cities, but there are like European context of the architecture uh, and documentation is really uh, not similar to Ukrainian context. So we have this like the challenge how to use all the experience of the architectural community from the world to repair our cities. So we understand that we need uh, to make like these connections between the world best practices from the architects around the world, connect with the Ukrainian regulations, and like to understand if it's real to make the great projects in the uh, context of Ukraine. The other big challenge was the the destruction is really big. It's not only the the cities Kharkiv or Chernihiv, but all these little villages. So we need to make like a catalog, uh, like idea catalog of quick solutions where we just can, like everyone could easily recognize uh, how the city could look like, uh, what they could make uh, according to Ukrainian regulations, but with the mind about the like the best practices in Europe. And the third uh, the challenge is the community because we are, always like to think that we are designers, we are architects, we know how we should make and build the cities, but the community and these local communities that we call the Hromada in Ukraine, they are really 
real owners of their land, uh, and there always was those who fight back at first uh, when the enemy, enemy comes. Uh, so we need to not just take them into the process of developing our guide, but also make this easy, recognizable vision for them. Like not a lot of words uh, and documentations, but the renders and photos where like even child could open our guide and understand that, okay, this is street uh, that I want to look like uh, in my city. That's why uh, we decided to make the city's rebuild guide. Uh, because we believe that it could help us with this quick rebuild of Ukrainian cities, also with the this catalog of best practices, and it's easy to use to Ukrainians like and local communities. But how to make the this city rebuild guide? Uh, we made it in three months. It was like the hell uh, to make this. But first of all, we need to understand what our we what we are rebuilding. So in, with a project uh, that's called Rebuild You Are, with the different companies, uh, we have made the big research of a lot of cities near by the Kyiv, and also Kharkiv and Sumer region. And this is, for example, Irpin. Uh, so we have like drones, uh, flights, and drone footage of every city almost in the first days after the occupation of our territory. Uh, and we make like open call, a lot of dozens of people, just volunteers, looked at this uh, footage and then by their hands put every house on the map and like make the mark about the destruction of this uh, house. So we know exactly uh, which houses and which zones and which streets are destroyed. And you can see that European is like uh, half of all buildings in European have some kind of just, uh, of uh, destruction like and even like some of them are totally destruction so you cannot repair this uh, and those cities are much more uh, so we make already uh, like 10 20 of them and still keep going because uh, there are already new destroyed cities that they occupied from Russians so we could make this decide, uh, research also and this uh, idea of collaboration, uh, for, at first it like really hard to make our little uh, company uh, team uh, this big document. And also it shouldn't be our document and our guide that we made as like experts that you need to build uh, like this. Uh, so we need to find how to collaborate with different people, with experts, with Ukrainians about making this guide. So we uh, take an easy part, we just make the open call uh, for the research and also for the making the guide. And we have like 500 answers. Uh, from these 100 of answers, we uh, talk to 50, more than 50 experts. Like here's they all. Uh, and uh, starting to make our project, uh, every part and every month we put uh, what we've done with Google Docs in the internet. Uh, and it's also it could be like a nightmare when you have uh, 100 pages of document and then like few hundred comments uh, to your document. But like it was so uh, interesting for us because there was only like really uh, important comments. Uh, then in Facebook, we are, of course have comments that we should dive before because of our document, because it's not similar to Ukrainian documents as they was usual. But uh, this was great to read and make. And then we uh, have uh, get the uh, support from uh, several companies, like one company, Deposit Photos. Uh, this is a photo uh, a site with photos and give us a lot of photos. Also, Bezbariernist, it's NGO. Uh, that worked with the first lady, Olena Zelenska, and they are uh, trying to make our cities uh, accessible. And also, we connect with the office of the president uh, of the Ukraine, uh, with the deputy, deputy head, uh, Kirill Tymoshenko, also Yuri Holik. So now we have like these uh, important colleagues uh, from, uh, pro from the office of the president, also NGO Bezbariernis. So we trying to find uh, these ways how to 
get our guide to the real municipalities in different regions so they could use it. So uh, what is the uh, city rebuild guide? Uh, this is a wrong uh, image. We make it before we get uh, like all the guide together because it has 400 pages. It's like three times thicker uh, than this render. Uh, and our idea was to make it our guide not our idea is that people should use them uh, this guide not because they have to but because they want to so for us it's like of course there are a lot of uh, important information uh, but first of all it's like uh, so interesting magazine uh, with different photos examples uh, like with uh, renders uh, and little texts where you could just read in the coffee shop and like try to dream about your city uh, like it, it's easy to say uh, like great photos uh, renders and models uh, but we have to make like almost 200 models 300 photos uh, find uh, all over the world to make this catalog of all the possible solutions for different zones in different Ukrainian cities and we have only five uh, like principles that we want to use when we make this First and the most important, I think, uh, uh, it's accessibility because, like, in a few years, there will be a lot of Ukrainians with disabilities after the war. So it's very important. Uh, that's why uh, we make the research of the uh, of the streets, uh, squares in Ukrainian cities with the NGO Bezbaryevnist of Olena Zelenska, trying to find out like every possible point uh, in the urban uh, squares and uh, yards where it could be not very delightful for people with disabilities. And then uh, we make this uh, guide so detailed uh, almost to the every entrance that could be in the rebuilt cities. Like even if you have this entrance in one level or maybe one step or three steps, so we have like five uh, types of the uh, entrances only, and there are a lot of more different uh, elements in our guide. The second one is ecology. Uh, like all we know about the climate change, it's really very important uh, question in Ukrainian cities because we have uh, not make a lot of changes to our cities uh, so that they could be uh, resilient for all these changes. Uh, but we make uh, also this catalog of different uh, gardens that could be near the streets or in the big squares where, can use, where you could use uh, different plants, trees, and like explain how to use this so your city will, be more, will have more greenery. Also, the third one is safety. Uh, and it's safety not only about the uh, shelters from missiles, but it's about the safety villages and safety uh, uh, streets and safety uh, places inside uh, the Ukrainian cities. So we make this uh, scheme where you could see a lot of different users of our streets, like pedestrians, cyclists, like uh, uh, passengers and make like more than 10 different streets that we know that they are really needed in our destroyed cities where you can see uh, like what you see is what you get when you could construct it in these cities so pedestrian streets like different streets uh, in the little villages uh, which uh, no one uh, was thinking about years before so there are different streets that you can use also diversity because uh, we have uh, a lot of cities, but not so much uh, the, some stuff to do there, because we always have these buildings and streets. So we make one chapter about the playgrounds, uh, about the sport grounds uh, that you could use just to show community that the benches in the park near the church is not uh, only the option. You can use a lot of stuff and put it in your city to use it fun 
and also aesthetic. Uh, we want like to repair our cities not only for like usage, but also to have fun and like to look at them uh, on, on to make them beautiful. So we make the new line of city furniture for rebuilt cities, where we have this pavilion, even pavilion for uh, trash containers, the the bus stop, the, the kiosk, uh, the toilet. Uh, we even designed the trash can for our pets' puke uh, because it's so important to make our cities clean. And we have like 13 chapters inside our uh, rebuild city rebuilds guide. And to make this more uh, like delightful to using them, uh, we make uh, 13 uh, patterns where like all different people are come together to rebuild their city. So this is the zones, and there are some architects uh, put in the photos. Uh, this is uh, yards, and there are some guys sitting on the bench and eating something. The squares with the manifestation, the streets, and so on, facades, uh, pedestrians, greenery, cyclists, uh, passengers, uh, automobiles, uh, playgrounds, objects, materials. So, like for every chapter, there are the different pattern. Uh, my favorite is this young girl that goes to swim in the pool while her father trying to put the umbrella. Uh, now it seems like the like fantasy in uh, Kiev or other cities in Ukraine, uh, but you can help to make this fantasy. The uh, young girl uh, will go to swim in the safety pool in the safety yard near her house. Uh, because today, uh, 14th of October, we have the Day of Defenders in Ukraine. Uh, so if you want, you can donate to the fund Come Back Alive, uh, the fund who help our defenders. Uh, or uh, if you're a designer, uh, <laughs> an architect, you can just connect with us by Facebook, Instagram, or by mail. Uh, and we could help you to find the project uh, which you can help to rebuild cities or just help Ukrainians. Uh, if you don't want to make anything, uh, you can just uh, chill out, uh, download uh, the city rebuild guide from our site, and look uh, for beautiful renders and photos. In few months, I believe we will translate it in English, so then you will could uh, have a possibility not only look for photos but also read this. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, quite. An, I think uh, your presentation and your initiative is the best thing that ever came out of a party that you started the organization from a party, and it's now going to this big guide. So you have a guide. It's it's done, right? It's or is it still being created? And what's next? Uh, is it already being implemented? Are people building already? Is it possible? Yeah, the, the guide is ready. Like these four hundred pages uh, are on, on online. Uh, now we make the translation in English, and we make in the print version, so everyone could use it. Uh, so maybe we will put there some chapters, uh, but we believe that 400 pages are enough for now. The, our next step uh, is to get uh, in touch with all the uh, communities uh, on the decoupated regions, uh, and like give them some recommendation how they could rebuild their cities. Uh, and uh, that's why we are connected with the Office of the President. And the next step is the real rebuild of Ukrainian cities. But now we have like only one possibility because all the money goes to the war. So now we rebuild only the critical infrastructure and some houses like where they really needed. But the big rebuilding of the Ukrainian cities will be after the winning. So we are trying to make all the preparation, uh, all the strategies right now. So then, like in one year, uh, we will make everything right. Great. Any questions for Maxim? Yes. Has there been any feedback from the communities about the designs and about the proposals in the guide? Yeah, the good question. <laughs> the 
uh, this is the hardest. Like it's easier to connect with the office of the president of the Ukraine uh, than with uh, some communities uh, right now in Ukraine because okay. they are the, commu- the destroyed cities. Like they have a lot of work to do right now because the winter is coming, and like this uh, communication about what we will have in a few years, uh, how we will rebuild cities, are not very important right now. Because they have to like rebuild the critical infrastructure, uh, like thought about the electricity and where they will uh, get it. So we have communications with different uh, city mayors, uh, but we just keep in touch to understand what we will make, like our next step. Great. Any more questions? Yes, over there. Uh, two more. So, uh, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, always when you're rebuilding things or when you're building, you have a limited amount of money you can spare on a project. And I'm wondering if when you were making this guide, did you just did you think about the budgets and maybe which part should be made first and then which should be like in case you have extra budget? you do this but these are the primary points yeah uh, okay there are like two parts uh, about the rebuilding of ukrainian cities first one uh, this like long term strategies the uh, guide is not about them because like you need to make them for several years with communication with like all the people uh, to make them uh, this is the tactical uh, instrument Like, if you want to repair something right here, right now, you could make it not like it was before, but you could make it better. Uh, So you could look uh, like real examples of playgrounds or houses or streets to make this. Uh, About the budgets, all um, uh, all these projects and all these items, they're made with uh, Ukrainian experts that already built some similar projects before. So we make not the most priceless, or price, uh, high priced projects. It was made like the everyone in Ukraine could use it. It will not like very much money to do it. Thank you. And one more last question. Thank you. Thank you for the the presentation. My question is related to sort of uh, connecting the dots a bit. First, um, I have to say that I, I admire the determination you seem to have a lot. And of course, uh, the short-term actions and the longer-term actions, they are two different stories. But going back to the presentation Maria gave us about the, about the situation in Lithuania between the wars, the era of optimism, as, as you, Maria, described it, is there something you you th- you feel you can uh, relate to or learn? Because I have a feeling that your determination and the actions you have already taken also include a lot of optimism. But how do you yourself feel about it? Yeah, uh, I feel like the it's a big strategy that now like in Ukraine and destroying the Ukrainian cities. Uh, but uh, it was easier. It's easier now to rebuild them from scratch uh, than to make the same projects like a year ago when every fine, uh, everything is fine. Like you don't need uh, to make something to live better. And now you can make all these hard decisions. Like you need to make all these hard decisions. You need to make this new vision for your city because uh, a lot of people go out from their uh, cities and villages. So the people who stay there and the municipalities, they need to find out how to get back those people into their cities and to their villages. And it's hard to make without this bold vision and like understandable idea uh, what we should make there. That's why uh, I think that uh, these ideas about the greater future is very important right now. Uh, when we are like developing our like steps and our road 
to rebuild these cities. So yeah, it's like a lot of possibilities right now, uh, but it's there because of war. Thank you for your question. And uh, so let's thank Maxim, and I guess we all wish a, the, the best uh, for, for doing the hard work, right? It's a big project coming up, it's already happening. So thank you very much, Maxim. Round of applause. Thank you.